What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA. I'm your host as always. Evil Eddie, we got a really exciting show with BKFC coming back to New York. And in the co-main event, we got our boy Jeremiah Riggs who's taking on Connor Terraney, who's actually, he's 5-1, and one, he's 27 years old, two wins by knockout, three wins by decision. He has one loss by KO, but his opponent, man, I mean, he has got something coming for him with Jeremiah Riggs, one of the most interesting guys. He's had reality shows that he's been on. He's, I mean, he's probably the biggest superstar on the card, let's be honest. So let me pull Jeremiah Riggs up in here. What's going on, Jeremiah? How you doing? What's up? How y'all doing, man? Doing hey. good. How you enjoying New York right now? Because I know you just got man, through the weigh-ins. Yeah, no, it's awesome, dude. Uh, it's it's really cool. Buffalo here is nice. Man, it's very beautiful. Um, I, 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 yeah, I definitely hope to have a little bit of time to kind of get out and check it, check the scenery. You know, it's just real awesome. They, everybody's been treat, treating us real nice up here. So you took this fight on real short notice. Yes. Is that the song that you're used to? You're kind of like a Matt Hughes, which you have a relationship with as well. Yeah. Um, you, you just stay ready for fights? I mean, this is a huge opportunity. Yeah, you know, uh, getting back into everything, especially uh, the opportunity with BKFC going, you know, months back. Um, yeah, you know, I, after the after the win, after the first fight, um, you know, my, my goal was to, to kind of get, get something going. Uh, Soon. Um, I was actually figuring it was going to be more like April, May, honestly. Uh, so it's not like I didn't have my mind not set on, on training and fighting. Uh, it was just a little bit lighter. You know, I, I do try to stay very much ready. And I ain't going to say try. I mean, I'm very active. Uh, I don't like, uh, because cause then, honestly, like I said, uh, I wasn't expecting a call so soon, but I was expecting something. Um, and, and with that, uh, with BKFC after fighting the talks and all that, um, man, it was really just a great opportunity. Um, I didn't really get into, you know, I've had questions like, do you know, if they called anybody else or whatever, it didn't really matter. Uh, it just falls in to, 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 to play. And uh, for me, you know, what not a better opportunity uh, to be in this company and do some, do, do my job. I mean, if you really want to get down to it, that's just what we do. You know, we sign up, we, we kind of know as a professional athlete, uh, these are the things that, that I've uh, skillfully trained for. I mean, this has been years and years. So, I mean, just knowing a part of the game, if you're not ready and you're on that roster, you know, shame on you. And Dana Way put that perfectly when you guys were all sitting there with, I think there was like 30 of you. Before you had It was the first season you had to fight to get in the house. Unfortunately, yeah. you weren't able to win. It was a great cast, but yeah. there were so many people. Let's Can we can we start there before yeah. we, I, I got so many yeah. interesting questions. What were you expecting that experience to be like? Because from what I remember in the research I've done, you sold your trucking company before that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's real that's real that's real talk. So like even before then that was actually when I went out to uh you know, back kinda of a little earlier before that, that's when the IFL was still going strong. I don't know if you remember that. You know, a lot of people kinda of don't, but uh so that was when I actually went out to California with Frank Shamrock with the razor claws and did all that. So yeah, you know, um just I just had Matt Horwich on, who was a former IFL champ. So, yeah, I know yeah, IFL. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, and, uh, man, I really hated to see that go away. I mean, while we're on that subject, dude, that was a really badass setup. Uh, just, it was just, I, I thought it was going to be great for MMA. But, uh, like I said, going back to the things of me getting into it, you know, that was, yeah, I mean, I straight up, uh, fully dedicated, you know, sold it out and uh, just to, to do what I love doing. Um, so um, it was very, very interesting. It, it takes a lot, and, and you just got to kind of know where you, what you want. You, you know, go, go for it. Going back to the IFL, what, what did you see 
promising about them because Bellator, you know, Scott Coker, when he took over, everyone had the hopes that they were going to be something nice, even PFL with Ray Seffo. What was it about IFL that you enjoyed and thought would be more successful? I thought, thought, like, of course, I like the ring. Um, I think the ring's a pretty cool setting. It's very different from the cage, so you got, um, it does play a difference in in your game. Uh, I just thought the team aspect of it was just so cool because it, you, you know, it you know, as you're in there, of course, you know, like say uh, UFC or whatever, you know, it's not so much as a team, and you all, you it is, but uh, I just like the way that really set up instead of just some card. It was this versus that, and it, to me, that I just thought that was just really unique, um, and I really I never understood why it didn't kind of excel. I, I just thought it was a badass. It was badass for MMA. I mean, um, I think it was definitely outside the box. So for people that, you know, are new to the sport, for people that came around when Conor McGregor blew the sport up, yeah. um, e- explain that a little bit more about about the teams and and why you like that more. Yeah, well, I just thought, you know, as going into things like, you know, even now, you know, I got my teammates with me or whatever, but it, it's really cool to have a setting where, everybody's competing you know what i'm saying i've been in that like same locker room uh last fight just me and al uh, velcher fighting on the same car you know when your teammates up and you're there sharing that experience it's really cool it's a lot different effect versus um just like being in the corner you know just helping that way versus hey this motherfucker's fighting and then and then the next couple of fights you know your teammates are up so i just thought that was just badass Now, we've been seeing that for a while, but not along the same premise. But we've seen even in the UFC, Bellator, fighters that are coming from the same camp, especially regional shows, right? Regional shows, they bring in a lot of regional guys, and they come in there. And it goes back to the UFC 1 when we saw the Gracies walk out with their hands on their shoulders. What happened to the IFL? Why why did they fall apart? That was kind of that was kind of a, I, th- I never really looked into that. I just know it was like there and then it's gone. And it was just like fuck. That was a bummer. I, I just I just like I said, I was a fan of it uh, then, and I was still a fan of the setting now. So going back, you sold your trucking company to go train with Matt Hughes, correct? Well, it was oh, at first I went out. Oh, the Shamrock. Yeah, yeah. But then after that, so after training and whatever, you know, I ended up coming back. Uh, the state side Mississippi and then uh, of course I was always with Belcher back and forth um, and then um, just had a real good opportunity at that time after the ultimate fighter you know Hughes and them actually kind contacted me hey man uh, it was actually Mark Fiore hey uh, look we saw you and we're very interested we'd love to have you on the team uh, would you like to come up and do, do a try pretty much try out, you know, come with the best guys. And, and yeah, you know, I was like, fuck yeah, let's do that. So, uh, and that was pretty cool, man. You know, that, uh, the hit squad, dude, we, we had a, a really tight, tight family. We still all are. Uh, but when I talk, when you talk about like going somewhere and like getting put in the ringer, oh yeah, man. I remember my first, first day, um, if it was a Monday, I drove up, I literally slept in my truck in the fucking parking lot outside. Um, they opened up the doors, walked in, met everybody. First, I mean, so that's like 8 o'clock. Uh, I think it was like 12 o'clock. Hey, get your gear on, we're sparring. Wow. Yeah, so it was like right in, and I'm talking about it wasn't no, it wasn't no show. I mean, it was everybody you know all the top guys so i mean of course and that's i wouldn't have expected anything less but i remember the first day i mean it was blood i mean shit i was bleeding everybody was i mean it was just a ringer and and, and after this guy the next guy then the next guy so i mean it was just all of us just 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 going at it they threw you in a shark tank basically for sure oh it was no doubt about that now, that's what Shamrock's training was kind of known for, was kind of, you know, going hard, putting your all. But over the years, they've learned a lot about, you know, training smarter. Do you still train that same way? No, or? no actually, it's so different now. Uh, we talk about that, uh, it's especially just say, you know, the, the, the more you're in the game, the older you get, uh, uh, 
uh, the things that's really changed now is sm- training a lot smarter, a lot technical, uh, being not so hard on the body. Um, me and me and Belcher have totally changed the way that we've. I mean, we spar. I mean, we got good spar sessions. Don't no, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's some cakewalk, but uh, the 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 training aspect of the beat down of the body. Um, I guess over the period of time and then the years that we've adapted and then you start seeing people doing the different smarter things or the techniques or saying, Hey, you know, don't get me wrong. You go, 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 go. But we trust me. When we was at the hit squad, there were wars. I bet dude, it was constant. And, and, and And now don't get me wrong. That don't, that does play in effect, but definitely toned it down a lot more. Yeah. Because it's so easy. The The fights are, are not the, the hard part. The fucking training is is where people get injured, is where people, you know, you, you, you think that, um, man, I got to go hard. You know, it's just really a whole different mindset, especially, I think, once you get smarter and more adaptable, uh, learning your body. So as the over the years, even the breaks that I've took, I've really – Listen to my body. Listen to the people that were around me, and just oh, it's just now 360 degrees uh, from where we are now to where we was. When you say breaks, you're just you mean oh, I went from MMA to wrestling, and then I did a reality show. Those are the kind of breaks that you're talking about. But you know, when it comes to BKFC, something I find really interesting. Uh, before we went live, I was telling you. I did a show with James McSweeney from Old Pit Fighter Season 10. And yeah. we were discussing, you know, the dangers of a UFC glove, the dangers of a boxing glove, and the difference between your bare fist. Now, do you, do you believe it's safer using your bare fist? Do you be because is there more damage done? What's your thought on this? I really believe it's totally opposite from what other what people really perceive. Um and it's because I think when you look at the bare knuckle fights, I mean, people are getting cut open a lot more, stuff like that. But when you look at, like, from my experience, from, from my first fight and this, the shots, you're really, I mean, you're not, you know, um, a, a se- where you're throwing just say 70, 75% in bare knuckle versus you know, you're in the, say, 90 to 100% in MMA. Now, some people say, well, I'm throwing 100% all the time. Well, you step in bare fucking knuckle, yeah, you're going to do it, but you're not going to do it very long. Uh, That is the difference. And when when I got to the recovery, uh, the headaches, uh, really, I I mean, there was none. Now, there was a different type of soreness, but as far as I think the, the hits or the licks. It didn't go as deep. Yeah, no, I mean, it's deep. I mean, it's kind of... It's more external than internal damage. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're so, like, you feel like, I I mean, like, my recovery, I was just, just, like, sore, you know? But I really, I wasn't, like, fucking, like, sitting over here, like, God, my fucking head. You know, fixing a split open. And the reason why that is, is because, you know, in boxing and MMA, your fucking hands are wrapped like concrete so the where you can where in bare knuckle you take a hit right here well that's a very different hit in bare knuckle versus that glove and and then in mma you know that padding you can really you can really you can really throw them and uh to me that's more physical damage than than bare knuckle see i was talking with bobby gunn maybe seven eight years ago and yep. we, we kind of got into it. And he was saying, with bare knuckle, it's more about picking your shots and yeah. where you're throwing them. For sure, yeah. I mean, well, your 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 dynamic of your punching, your 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 bullseye areas. I mean, you're, you're it's very small. You're talking about right here, below the eyebrow to here, not not here. I mean, you don't you want to stay very very small, uh, uh, because of the fact of. of I mean, shit, everything else is hard. You know what I mean? You don't want to hit right around here in your knuckles. That, that's actually kind of a defensive mechanism. Like the the, the old Chris Lieben, right? Using your head. And uh, you you actually had a, a relationship with him? Were you close with Chris at I mean, all? I, I, 
really didn't know each other. I've always followed Chris. I mean, I was a fan of Chris. I think, you know, back in, you know, in the years, I know he's seen me and stuff like that. But, yeah, I've always had a lot of respect for Chris Liebman, man. You know, there's a lot of legends in this sport that have taken a lot of damage. Have you looked into CTE, and do you believe that plays a part in, uh, you know, poor decisions in the um, future? And mental do- health is very important. We, I mean, I, I really believe that. Uh, I think you got to kind of spiritually kind of find that more or less. I mean, I think everybody has their demons or things that, that they deal with on a personal and business uh, type deal. Um, I've worked on that a lot. You know, I, I feel like my mental game is really, really strong, a lot leveled up. That's but, uh, important. I think it's uh, – I might have a little different opinion on – CTE and stuff like that only because I think you know it is a is a mind thing I think you can't just really get lost in your mind or or whatever you you know I'm not gonna say it's not a thing uh, but I think some people sometimes it can be the word can be a little abusive I guess if that makes sense if what I'm trying to say meaning that yeah I think it's a thing but I don't believe it's as maybe as big of a thing uh, it will not it's not going to change Frank into Ken, is what you're saying, yeah, right? Yeah, no, fuck no. I mean, yeah. Uh, I think it really, sometimes it's, I think sometimes people get CT mixed up with uh, their own physical emotions. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Thinking, oh, I'm having a hard fucking time. I'm, I've been hit, hit, you know. Well, I mean, I guess you can believe what you want, but I think some of that's just being a better person. I think everybody's got to mentally try to really be a better fucking person. You know, I, (laughs) you know, I I battle depression and anxiety and I've been hit in the head a million times, but man, you, you've actually been on boat. You've been on bull riding. You've had your adrenaline hyped up, you know, on all these reality shows. Can we talk about the reality show aspect of this? I mean, you were on a couple of shows, a Daisy of love back in 2009, where you actually had a fight on the show against a guy named 12 pack. Uh, yeah. what, what's yeah. the story with that? How'd you get on that show? Yeah, man, that was pretty cool. Uh, the reality show aspects of, of my career have been really, it's really been, it's really an eye opener. You know, it's really helped me in my career. If anything, I'm mean, just paying attention, just being around that, you know, it's a very different, it can kind of get you, you know, you see people on TV and then that, that atmosphere can really, it really plays, people's you know perception of you know what i'm saying they think that it's this or they they become a character or some shit you know and it's it's different it is a different set but uh, all the the shows and stuff that i have done uh fortunately i was very uh very uh keen to that you know like trying to learn something from it or figure it out now you were on um Daisy of Love, I Love Money 3, and yep. Steve Austin's Broken Skull Challenge. Now, yep. I actually, that was my very first interview. I was six years old, and I actually got to interview Stone Cold Steve yep. Austin on the on the radio. Great guy, man. He's really great. We still keep in contact. I, we, we Every, you know, Christmas or we hunting or I got some crazy ass picture or something. Yeah, I, I like sending him, messing with him and shit like that, so... Uh, very, very humble man. He he is a very real, you know, what you see is what you get. I always like to say, yeah, like, is he like that all the time? I guess I'm like, yeah, just, you know, he, he can turn the volume up. <laughs> I can too. Yeah, I get, I get it. And, uh, but no, as far as like people, man, he was, he was really awesome. He's a really, really smart guy. A lot of good, like, things to uh, talk about. And, he, you know, especially what he shared with us, you know, just, um, He's just really down to earth. I mean, I really it just, it's kind of like me, you know? Now, as we are doing this on video, for the people that are listening to the audio podcast right now, make sure to jump over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pureevilma. We're looking at your Instagram right now. You just brought up that, you know, stone cold and hunting. I, I see that you go frog hunting. You got pigs yeah. on here. Yeah. You're an yeah. animal person. You got a horse. <laughs> Uh, what's the story behind all this? Uh, do you live on a farm? Uh, Man, uh, I, I, I don't d- directly live on a farm, but I've definitely lived the, you know, the farm life. I mean, I've got 
I've got bucking bulls. I've got beef cows. I've got a few horses or a couple horses, I would say. Um, man, I'm always out out in the country doing something. I stay very active uh, back home as far as people. You know, people call me. I go help with tending for cows and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I'm, I really have a lot of interactions with uh, animals and stuff really throughout the whole day, every day. Every, there's always something with them. I mean, whether I'm here or not, you know, uh, I got people back home that, that help me out. I really think I'm very, very thankful for them, for them guys that's got my back. But, uh, yeah, man, that's cool, dude. I, I've, I've learned a lot from being around uh, it's kind of them kind of animals it's, it's really a spirit thing dude it's it's kind of cool to i like going out there and just kind of being being with them and just kind of having that time it's it's really uh um, it's very mentally um settling um so uh but yeah it's a very big part of my life and uh, i've learned a lot from that now i see that we're going through instagram your daughter you're teaching your daughter how to ride a horse yeah so- man that's yeah that's if that shit don't break my ass, it won't be a barrel racer. Yeah, if I'm like, God, you know, dad's got it in. But no, that's cool. Yeah, so my kids, I really try to bring that in their lives. You know, I want, um, it's a, it's a bit, it's because it's a really a big responsibility. You know, I see these people getting their dogs and stuff like that, and that's cool. But some of these motherfuckers can't even feed their cells. I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm wondering, like, damn, you can't even take care of your cells. Fuck, you going to take care of that? You know, it's, it, it's a very big responsibility. Um, I teach my girls that um, I, I, I like to have that interaction in their lives. I, it gives them a, a, a sense of a, respo- a big responsibility uh, because, you know, when you have animals of, of what we have and, 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 and they're on that farm and stuff, you know, I always tell them, hey, the animals come first, then then you come, you know, because in that, in that mindset, you know, I try to teach my girls like, hey, man, you know, they can't get up. And, and go turn the water faucet on. They don't. They don't get to go eat when they want to necessarily. So um, it's it's a very big responsibility, and um, it's something that that I've learned. Uh, I've, I've grown from it and leveled up in life of, of knowing, like you know, very being very responsible or active in uh, what what comes first. You know, priorities very very much funny that you're saying that because I was just having a conversation yesterday with somebody uh one of my pet rats I thought was having a breathing problem Uh and I was like you don't understand like their whole reality is based off of what I'm giving them where I'm bringing them what uh you know the cage is uh like I'm basically their god and I'm trying to make it the best I can for them I can only imagine what it's like having child and trying to teach them that so, and you know, a horse is not cheap whatsoever. No. No. Whatsoever. Hell, so, <laughs> the, a lot every day. <laughs> this bull riding thing, man, I've always wanted to do it. Uh, how'd you get into doing that? Because that's, that's wild. Man, uh, I'll cheers to that. It was really, you know, years, years into back in, you know, my early, early 20s and stuff like that. I kind of had, you know, I had a, wasn't around a lot of it honestly but it was really intriguing to me and at one time i had very much like looked in it and it just kind of faded but it, it come back in into my life and um so i got up with i um, actually made a call um it was back in 2015 david barry uh locust grow the berry ranch monster bull.com for, for a real bull yeah, yeah, so I called him, it was like for school, and um, I said, hey man, you know, I kind of explained who I was, not saying like, hey man, I'm kind of like, like your regular guy that's going to be calling you, and this is, you know, kind of, you know, I'm like, want to know, hey, this is legit, I, uh, it's not going to be something I'm going to try, to just like, oh, I just want to do it, like, I want to, like, be successful, you know, like, really just, like have a career change as if you're entering a new gym or something right oh it's a a whole nother world yeah um and and that's a real reality like um you know that's not something that is different than like hey let's go put you want to try a box or learn that i mean it's it's very very like 360 than anything i've ever done very it'll very humble you very fucking quickly um but getting into that 
you know, uh, man, me and David met, uh, went up there, did a school, just, just kind of like every beginning, you know, just kind of filled it out. And, but I never stopped. I mean, I kept going back. I kept going back. Now we're talking about seven hours, man, from my house to hit to the ranch. And I was averaging 10 bulls a month for my first year going back and forth to Oklahoma. So it wasn't like something I woke up and was like, Oh, you know, this is cool. Cause being cool is not cool in that sport. You know, you, you're talking about a 2000 pound animal, just bump you or step on you and shit changes your whole life. Um, and that's the reality of it. So, uh, but what it has done for me is it's mentally prepared me and physically prepared me really where I'm at now in, in such a huge way. Cause it's kind of like I laugh with these guys. I'm like, look, man, these motherfuckers are 170 pounds. I'm fucking with 2,000 pounds, you know? Uh, and when you do that, you really can bring a reality to where, you know, this this really ain't, it's really not that bad. <laughs> Looking into the perspective of things. When you overcome your fears, yes. correct? So I got, a, I got a couple more questions for you. Um, Obviously, the bull riding thing, but you hold a record, uh, 2,200 yards in one season in 1999-2000. You played uh, college football, correct? Yeah, so uh, that back in, uh, that was, you know, my high school days, yeah. You know, I was football, you know, I've always been sports, sports, sports affiliated. Um, I actually got hurt my senior year, baseball. And um, I actually give up a scholarship to a D, D2 school. Uh, but, it, you know, it's kind of one of the things where you, you kind of look at things and it's just try, man. You can pick too many people just kind of give up their hopes or don't really figure it out. You know, it's kind of like, man, you know, that, that was my shot. Well, and it really wasn't then if it didn't pan out that way. But I got, I got my ass back on track. Um, I had a surgery on my ankle. And uh, just kind of went through that, got with the right people, walked on ju Juco Ball, and signed a full ride. Um, so going into that, I kind of found myself back, was back into football. And, a full uh, ride. Yeah, good, yeah, I had a good, I had a, I had a good football uh, career. You know, we had some. It was, and when I got into college, it was a little different. I mean, I had some things that, uh, you know, just personal. You know, wasn't really personal affected me or anything. Just coaches shit, and just you know, sometimes you, you can head, you can get in a, a budding match with a coach, and that's kind of where where I was at with uh, our offensive coordinator. And I just kind of was like, uh, hey man, you know, things change. So that's that's after that. That's when I just joined the military. Me and dad, you know, my dad's a, a retired vet. I mean, command sergeant major. He's decorated to the core. And God bless. Like, Thank him for up. his service. Thank you, man. So one thing growing up, you know, that was a big part of my life. You know, my dad Ooh, to that. was overseas or something like that. So uh, the, in the military aspect and going into, you probably had a question for that, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> so after college, man, you know, it was kind of like, all right, I'm going to give this, I'm going to do, you know, kind of go, go go with dad and kind of say, all right, let, let's try this. But when I went in, I was like, hey, man, because um, initially I was going to, uh, Go in the Navy. I was going to do the SEALs. I, I, to do I saw you were training. You you actually did a charity benefit for St. Jude yeah. uh, while you were preparing. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was big. You know, I like to give back, man, uh, especially like locally. You know, there's so many people that give their time and effort and just their support. And the, the, the least I can do is give that back, give my time, my support, my love for the, the people that supported me. And, and look up to me, you know, and, and my biggest thing is just like, if I could have one kid or one person to get something out of what I'm giving out, dude, if it can change someone's life, like it's changed mine. I mean, dude, you gotta, you know, that's a win. That's a life win. That's, that's, that's bigger than any win that I've had in fighting, combat sport, anything. Uh, you know, giving back to the, to the community, the people, that, that's really my big thing, man. That's, I love being able to be humble and supportive enough to know that I'm bigger. It's a bigger thing than just fighting and bull riding and, and stuff like that. You know, kids involved. You know, someone's always looking at you. You know, uh, even not wanting you to do good. And that's okay too. Um, you gotta have them people to 
other motivates you as well. So I'm big on that, man. I really like the in some form of fashion. I always try to find something I can give back. You seem like you were raised by a, a military father. Uh, do, do you think he's proud of, of everything that you've done? Because you seem like a pretty pretty badass man. Yeah, man. You know, Dad, me and Dad talk. You know, Dad, it's really cool. You know, that's, that's, that's like one of my heroes, man. I look up to what Dad, my dad's done. Shit, that motherfucker, 65, 66 years old. That motherfucker's on the Appalachian Trail right now. Wow. Yeah. It's up in West Virginia. It cold as a motherfucker. When he took he took me to the airport, listen, I was like, "What you what you got going on?" You know what you? And he was like, "Oh man, you know I'm 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 hitting the trail." And I was like, "Damn, you already headed back?" Because he's been he's been out documenting it. He's fucking that's behold. interesting. So uh, yeah, I was like, "Yeah, that's what's up, man." So, you know, I guess kind of where I get it from, man. You know, I, you know, dad has has been a big strong uh, attribute in my life and um i don't I never mind walking in his footsteps and but even even being so differently uh, uh, uh a side of dad you know he gets it i mean um uh, he, he did get it at first you know he's like oh you know because i know being uh, you know this career and this and that and i, get, I always got it um uh, but after after a little while, you know, you kind of figure, all right, yeah, I'm proud of you know this is this is this is awesome, dude. I'm super proud of where you where you come, um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, that, that's really that's been a big part of my life. Uh, he's kind of seeing you know that the, the the stuff that Dad's done, and then kind of following in that, but actually kind of doing my own thing. You that's know? yeah. Really, you know, because uh, I mean, I've tried, you know, not saying, not saying, you know, hey, man, I tried doing what my dad wanted and stuff like that. But I did give an effort to um, look at the things that he he was putting me down them roads and, and, and figuring it out. Uh, so, you know, hat, really hats off to the old man for that, you know. Even doing the Appalachian Trail, I was watching a short documentaries of people that do uh, Mount Everest and how many people die every year, how expensive it is. So and that trail, like he was showing me, I was like, so what is it? You know, I don't know what the Appalachian Trail is, but you're talking about a 2,000 fucking miles. And he's going to walk the, they, they, he's going to walk a very, very good piece of it. Uh, and he's going to walk the whole thing. He's going to go from one end to the other. And I'm like, that's badass. I'm, I'm going to go with him. We've been talking about doing like a three or four day deal. Um, at one part, he's gonna set up a thing. I'm actually gonna do some some filming uh, with him and, and try to get out there for about three or four days with him. It's funny because I actually wrote down in my notes about you. Dad was uh, your hero. That's actually kind yeah. of funny. Uh, a couple more questions here for you. I saw a photo. Uh, you met Chum Lee from Pawn Stars. Yeah, like, yeah, the... man. I was in Vegas. We actually got to go check them guys out. Uh, it's been a while back, but man, that was, I kind of really, I mean, they're still, you know, fucking known all over, but uh, yeah, so I was out there doing some training and spot, stumbled upon the store and as we were sitting out there. Um, I forgot who I met at first, and then they kind of, you know, man, we got a guy out here, you know, MMA, da 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 so they kind of drug me in the back. I got to meet them meet and, uh, and kind of really hang out in the back side of the store. That was pretty cool. Them guys are like, it's it's not, it's, it's what was crazy to me was being in the store. It's really, really small. You know, I had, I mean, it's not as, I mean, it's, you think that's a fucking huge pawn shop. That's big, but it, it like in the inside, you know, I was like, damn. Yeah. Know, they, or for for what they are, what they show, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. It was a very good setting. I mean, um, them guys were really, that was really a badass little deal I got to fuck with. I got to say, man, for your fight being one day away, you, you it seems like you got a, a lot of energy right yeah, now. Yeah, dude, very positive, man. This is, uh, it, man, I, I'm loving what now. I really do. I'm, I'm like really soaking up. Did you do any research on your opponent before the fight? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, looking up Connor, you know, you're talking about one of the game, you know, really very, very, very game. I mean, BK, I mean, the BKB champ. I mean, he's number, one of the number one guys in the UK. Uh, for me to have the opportunity to step up, um, you know, I, I just didn't see, see him. I don't see me or anyone, you know, not being in this spot. 
you know. Um, so, um, and, and what a hell of a fight it's going to be. I, I can't wait to represent the, the United States, man. It's, it's kind of a little bigger than, than, than just a fight. Before we talk more about the fight, man, um, taking a fight on short notice for, for people who are tuning in, listening, can you tell them what kind of a disadvantage or an advantage that could be? Yeah, man, you know, it's got its disadvantages for sure. I mean, you know, the prep, you know, the mind getting it, you know, getting it, you know, seven days to like ah, throw some shit together. That can be like a, a pretty, you know, a hell of a bam, you know, all at once for some people. But you uh, trained with Matt Hughes in the past yeah. and he mm-hmm. used to claim that he wouldn't even train before fights. He would just be on on the farm and he. Yeah. I mean, yes, yeah, so he's a super freak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he could uh, that dude, that wrestling deal, man. He was just a, a whole other deal. But I mean, I, I kind of do the same. You know, even when I'm not just say in the gym. Oh, trust me. Like when I'm out doing chores and stuff, I make it very uh, fun for myself. You know, I, it's always like this. If I'm out there feeding or throwing hay or something, I can I can always do it the easy way. I can get on a buggy and drive around. Or I can make it very cool and turn it into farm carries and and and, and try to you know get there and get get back real quick and so this I mean so it's very I make it very active for me um, in a a way that um, I'm doing my job but I'm getting some kind of training or some something out of it and and to me that that keeps me all very well uh, tip top. Exactly. Now, uh, differently too, in a different aspect too. You know, it gives you that little, you know, that country strength. You know, that man shit. That I'm telling you, the country boys, they really have proved them, uh, proved themselves over the years against us guys over here on the East Coast. And you can even watch Dana White's Contender Series. Uh, and you'll see the results there. Now, one of my, I got two more questions. Monday yep. Night Raw, you're on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, uh, two, two big, appearance. you were on the reality show as well, Tough Enough. Um, right. Why are you not following that? Why are you going back and forth? And is that an issue for people? Like, are they, you know, mad at you for doing that or... You know, what, what, what's going on with your career for wrestling? Um, man, you know, then I had, you know, uh, going into the Tough Enough deal. I uh, mean, I get asked that a lot. You know, WWE is a very huge thing. Um, it, was a, it was a badass opportunity. I think that, you know, even then when I was in, you know, I excelled pretty quickly. Um, I, I think some, some quickly than others expected. Uh, not say, you know, I, I kind of went in there. I like to say I had a bullseye on me, but I, that was expected. You know, MMA guy, wrestling world, whatever. Um, but to excel. But I Brock Lesnar did it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, you know, you put me, I'm, you know, I'm just a, I guess you could say a freak of nature I can be, you know, athletically. But it, it is a very hard crossover. Now, don't get me wrong. You, when you look at the guys that's been able to be successful and, I, and I'm going to put myself up right there in it because uh, just because I wasn't headlining WWE or I'm not on their roster. Oh, trust me. I was on the roster man. I did, did out, did the guy guys that's been doing it eight, 10, 12 years um, successfully on um, top, you know, I was on top in the, in the show production. Um, but you know, I sometimes look at things and, it is what it is. That was a path that I was driven down. It was something that I, I was I very much look into and very accomplished. Uh, I don't hold nothing against for how anything's turned out. Um, it just it, it was a I seized the moment, and um, I, and I always will do that. And I, I took a lot from that. I took a lot from the people, the coaches, uh, the guys that I've met on the show. I mean, it was a big it was a, it was a big journey in my life. Um, and it was a big, it was a big preparation. I mean, you know, it's very physical. Uh, them 12, 13 weeks or so we was there. I mean, I always tell a story about me coming home and getting my brother and we were going to work out. I can remember getting back, you know, we were doing some legs that day, getting under a squat. And I'm talking about very light. It's like I was trying to warm up. Went down, I come up, I racked the weight and I was like, I'm done, man. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'm I'm beat like my knee, like it was, it was kind of like surreal going like, oh, you know, this is, 
This is uh, very physical. Very, very physical. Flashbacks of sleeping in your car overnight and then yeah. sparring at noon, right? <laughs> yeah, for real. But, uh, but yeah, I had a lot of respect for that and guy. You know, I mean, it, it's very different, but I'm, I was very, very, very supportive. Very, you know, I, I like the community <laughs> of them guys. Um, I don't really watch it like I used to. Of course, you know, I got my own things going on or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, man, that was a cool last journey. I took a lot with that. And I still talk. I still talk with them. You know, hell, I had a conversation today with Bill Lamont, man. Man, me and him. We, we still have, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go see his ass uh, probably pretty soon. Um, I haven't really uh, got to see any, many, or a lot of them people since then, but we still do keep in contact because, man, I take things that them guys have instilled here and here, and I still think about them every, every day because that's a, you know, I'm very thankful for the people that's been in my life. Now, BKFC has been super successful. I'm so happy to see him back here in New York. Um, you know, what what has it been like? Well, what, what are your plans for the rest of the night and then tomorrow leading into the fight? So basically, you know, we're just getting hydrated, motivated. Um, nothing really crazy, man. You know, I just kind of like just soak it up, just relax. Um, all right, you know, I'm, I'm past all the hype and the pump that, you know, I don't – I'm, I'm, you know, my mindset, you know, it's it's all, you know, it's just, just staying focused, man. Just doing my job. And with BKFC in the future, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a company man, dude. I'm, I'm here to do what, what they ask me to do, do my job. And, um, and I know and I'm very thankful for it. Uh, and I'm going to be very loyal. I'm going to be able to, you're not going to see me. And I'm going to say that to right now. You know, and they know that I'm not, I'm not looking to, try to venture out anywhere else i mean i want to stick with these guys and uh finish my career and continue my legacy and just just seal seal what i'm gonna be and who i'm gonna be and, and uh, man i'm very thankful for bkfc for giving me the opportunity to do that before i ask you what your prediction is and why people should tune in to watch the fight man can you tell me if you believe if you have sex the night before a fight, would that take away from your energy, your your accuracy? Do you believe in that? No, I mean I think there's that's a thing I've I've been asked that in the past. I don't think so. I mean sometimes I I believe it's really good for you. Maybe I don't know the night before. I don't know if that would really affect you. I mean I've I've had I've done it, but uh, sometimes I think you gotta gotta get you kind of gotta get out of you know, get them, I say the cobweb or really sometimes it's good to get that out of your system uh, to not take that because everybody seems like, you know, everybody wants to get pumped up, get fucking, ah! Uh, sometimes I think that's a disadvantage to them guys. Um, I think you, if you do know or like, I think that, that comes with the experience. It comes with forming of who you are and how you, uh, you know, Know, get to know yourself. Um, I think that's a, probably a 50 50 deal. I think some guys will say, Oh, that's just crazy. Why would you want to do that? You're going to expend your, your tap. No, I don't believe all that, man. So, honestly, it's probably better than it is. I, I, I kind of believe what you're saying here because I feel like if you have too much testosterone, you might, you know, if you, if you get caught with the hook, you might want to go into a war instead yeah. of. You know, thinking a little bit clearer. Clearer, yeah. I mean, think. I mean, you're talking about. I mean, when you talk about the human body, man, your your hormones, the, your feelings, all that does play in part. And uh, sometimes it, I think it's good to kind of be a little, a little on that that on that that flat that flat line, or I guess you could say that that to, to coast yourself up. You know, you want as you Happy want Gilmore to, would that, say, your happy place. Yeah, it's like a roller coaster. You want to grab. You want to go up to to. Get get the ride down, you know. You know, you you, you don't. I say sometimes, you know, having to, to you know, you have to kind of blind your focus sometimes. So I, I think that's a personal thing a lot. Now, last question here: What do you think is the main reason everyone to tune in tomorrow to watch the fight, and why is your fight going to be the number one fight that people are going to talk about? Shit, man, it's simple. It's the U.S. versus the U.K. You know, that 
to me, that is just bigger than 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 anything. Uh, what do the guy that that uh, and this game, man? I'm not gonna say nothing, but good good about it. I mean, that this should level me up. You know, a guy at that level. Uh, this is this is what I'm here to do. You know, it's like he said. You know, I watched one of his interviews. You know, this is the cream of the crop. This is the BKFC. This is the guy. You know, the top tier. And and, and he's right. You know, I, I totally agree with him. Uh, this is going to be a fight that you don't want to miss. And I can honestly see this going uh, going a distance. I mean, really, just, I'm gonna push myself. I'm gonna push him. I'm gonna get in his face. You know, really, really test the my left. That's what it's all about. You know, competing, testing my skills and what I believe in myself. Just, just going out there and doing, doing the damn thing, leaving it all in there, dude. That's me. I leave it all in there, all or nothing. And it's, I mean, it's for all the hardworking people of America. It's for the fucking U.S. I mean, this right here is for fucking marbles. It's kind of bigger. It's almost bigger than, than the belt, <laughs> in a way. You know, uh, this this fight right here is is really going to be something to to watch. So when you win the belt, how how many times are you planning on fighting uh, this man, year? Uh, man, honestly, this year I was really wanting to, you know, for for sure I, w- I wanted to do three fights. Oh, for, wow. yeah, three to four for sure. That would be really awesome. Um, now what I have learned in this is uh, the, the 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 recouping. You know, after the fight, healing. The healing process or figuring out uh, really what's best, how soon or not soon to get back in, in the ring. I think that's a very big deal because uh, it's, it's very different with BKFC. The hands, uh, the, the, like I said, the, the, the uh, getting back to normal. But, I mean, honestly, dude, um, I would really, you know, if, if title contentions are there, oh, yeah, defend it you know, oh, easily, I would say as many times as possible. Uh, but I really do want to seal my legacy as a champion in this sport and uh, and fucking do what I can for the company. And taking sure. the fight on short notice says yeah. everything right there. Uh, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Pure Evil MMA. BKFC New York City 2 at the Seneca Algeny Resort and Casino. The fight begins at 9 p.m. I believe that's the main card that they're talking about. Yeah, and that's going to be Eastern time, so it'll be 8 Central uh, time. Um, so if anybody think you know, 9 o'clock, you know, if you're Eastern Central, it'll be 8 Eastern. I mean, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. And there's 11 fights on this entire thing, man. So uh, def- that, this, that card, that's one thing I can say that since I've followed or been in BKFC, man, they're putting it out there, dude. And I like that. I mean, the guys, just the BKC family, the production staff, uh, they're, they're great. I've been around all of the productions, um, and they're, they're top. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to help this grow into the biggest combat sports ever. What, one last question. What do you yeah. think that you have in your abilities that are better than your opponent's? Mind and heart, man. You just you ain't gonna. It's just the no give up. You know, the, the do it for 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 me for what I stand for, what I believe in. It's it's, it's all or nothing. Um, not saying that against anybody that don't have that, but for me, you know, it's it's, it's all. It's it's not gonna do anything but be left all in there. Uh, 